ever download some amazing software, totally free, and wonder like, okay, what's the catch? Happens all the time, right? Totally. Yeah. The answer is usually hidden in plain sight, something we rarely check the software license. We're going to dive into a, a fascinating one today, the GNU General Public License version 3.0. GPL v3, for sure. Exactly. GPL v3. Now, before you tune out thinking legal documents, I promise this is different. It's like the Magna Carta of software freedom. It lays down the law for how you, the user, can actually own and control what you do digitally. It's a huge shift. See, most software licenses are all about restriction what you can't do. The GPL flips that around. It focuses on what you can do. Right. Use it, study it, share it, even change the software all freely. It's about giving the power to the user. Okay, so let's break down this whole free software thing. Huh. We're talking freedom, not just price, right? right? Like, imagine borrowing a book, but you're only allowed to read a summary someone else chose. With the GPL, you're getting the whole book, the source code to explore learn from, even rewrite. Exactly. And that leads us to those four fundamental freedoms the GPL guarantees. Number one, you're free to use the software, any purpose, personal, commercial, whatever you can think of. Number two, you can look under the hood, study how the software works, and if you're up for it, tinker with the code itself. Whoa, so I can actually change the software I'm using. That's wild. Exactly. And that takes us to number three, Sharing. You can share copies of this GPL software with anyone. And finally, freedom number four, you can distribute those versions you modified. Made it better. Share those improvements. It's like a freedom chain reaction. That's really something. But how does the GPL actually make sure these freedoms are protected? It's a clever two-step process. First, the developer, the one with the copyright. They assert their rights. That's standard. But here's the difference. Instead of locking their creation down, they give you the GPL. It's a legal document, but it's granting you those four freedoms in writing. So kind of like baking, right? Yeah. The developer is sharing their recipe, the source code, with everyone. I like that. You're free to bake with it, change it up, add your own twist, maybe even open your own bakery based on their recipe. And what's crucial is corresponding source. Even if you get the pre-made software, the ready-to-use version, you still have the right to see the source code, the original recipe. That is huge. Because it's like having the blueprints to your house, right? This. You might not be an architect, but if you want to know how the plumbing works or at a window, you need those. Exactly. Having that source code lets you understand how it works, check if it's secure, even fix bugs yourself. It's about transparency, you know? Like, remember that heart bleed bug a few years back? Yeah. That was a big vulnerability in a really common piece of open source software. Because the code was open, security people found the problem fast, made a fix, alerted everyone. So because it was open source, GPL protected, they could react quicker to a security risk. That's huge. It is. And that wouldn't have been possible if the GPL didn't guarantee access to that source code. But it goes further. The GPL even handles other things that get in the way of software freedom, like patents. Ah, patents. Always seem kind of tricky to me. How does the GPL fit into that? Okay, so imagine this. A community garden. Everyone sharing seeds, tools, knowledge, the whole deal. Now imagine someone tries to say they own all the tomatoes grown there because they have a patent on a specific type of tomato. Oh, wow. That just ruins the whole point of the garden. Totally. You know? All that creativity, collaboration, gone. And that's what the GPL stops from happening in software. It's got parts in it that prevent someone from releasing GPL software, then later on slapping a patent lawsuit on someone else who's using that same software. Keeps that freedom to use it, modify it, share it, protect it. That's a relief. So no restrictive licenses. We have access to the code, protection from patent issues, mm -hmm. anything else trying to limit what we can do with our software. There is one more big one, digital rights management or DRM. DRM. Yeah, it's basically a way to control what you do with digital stuff, even if you technically own it. DRM. Like those terms and conditions pages no one reads, but for our devices and software. You got it. And it's a pain. Like you buy an ebook, but because of DRM, you can't lend it to a friend, can't even read it on a different device. Right. Or those software subscriptions, they stop working if you're offline. That's DRM. Okay, so how does GPL handle this whole trend of controlling how we use stuff we own? It takes a hard line. The GPL says if you have software under its license, you can modify it even if the device tries to stop you with technical tricks. So even if the company that made my device says, I can't. Even then, it's about keeping your freedom to tinker, even as more and more devices become locked down. That's bold. It's like saying, I can change the tires on my car, even if the manufacturer says I have to use their brand. Exactly. The GPL gets that real software freedom, means you control the tech. 
not the other way around. This deep dive has been eye-opening. We covered those four freedoms, how GPL deals with patents, DRM. But for someone who isn't coding every day, why does this matter? What's the big takeaway? You nailed it. GPL comes down to empowerment. It makes sure software, this tool that shapes so much of our lives, stays a tool for good. Collaboration, innovation, freedom, very to the goals. Well, we're not just along for the ride. We can actually shape the tech we use. Precisely. And think about it. GPL's impact, it goes beyond just software, right? Yeah. It's a perfect example of how when people work together openly, they can create something that benefits everyone. Makes you wonder, what if we use these ideas, openness, user freedom in other areas? Like what? What if education or scientific research were run on those principles? Now that's something to think about. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into the GNU General Public License. Hopefully you're walking away with a better sense of what makes software free, how the GPO protects that, and why it matters to all of us. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep those digital freedoms strong.